Okay, <coughs> this one out is not existing. We use just a switching workflow, general switching workflow that goes into uh, higher temperature in this case that is, uh, is needed for the long wave radiation estimator. Um, yeah, the, you can have a lot of questions. Uh, do we have done a good job and the good things? It depends actually on the uh, estimator that you use called GOFs, goodness of fit estimator. And the final question is, are the real is the GOF good? So you have several choices that actually you can do before this operation. Say, you are using a real root mean square, but this real mean root mean square useful for what you are, want to do for the, for the final result. Okay, all of this variation in the, is matter of the work you have to do. Usually we do it automatically, but uh, at least once in your life you have to think about why you choose a certain uh, optimizable instead of the other. Uh, this is the Kriging, the ordinary Kriging case, and the, the structure of the of the of the thing is the same. And here, what appears here is also this leave one out Kriging's, which is for simply Kriging's, which is the name of the of the component. And uh, these are uh, the variables that we we use for use for the simulation. You can observe here that the range nugget seal are fixed. How they are fixed? Because we already have run before the optimization, the optimization, and we obtain these parameters. Obviously, all these. Uh, digits are not significant at all. Maybe they are significant like this, one or two or three, but no more than that. And this is the this is the uh, the ordinary creaching uh, which uses all the stations. If you want to use some of the stations, you just uncomment. This, uh, these two, two uh, cases, actually the number of the station is up there. If you are commented, you leave this parameter, you have four stations. You, you take just a point at the closest station, four closest stations that you have. Uh, because here the strategy is to not really to look at the distance, but uh, to look at the number of the station, because otherwise you choose a range. <coughs> And within that radius, you don't have any station. And so you are not in good shape. And here, in this case, if you put yes, true here, obviously you can uncomment and put, and put false, which is the same. But if you put true uh, on that line, uh, what is it done? It do also the trending, local the trending. So with just commenting and commenting th these two lines, you, you can add all the variation you need. And so finally, this is the, the connection. The, you read the data for the, for the rhythm in this case. You read the stations and you write the final result. Uh, just an example, we run here at on, on this data, il, the, it was the temperature, and the measure was uh, this one, blue, and the, and the red one was the simulated, but uh, obtained with the one simulation of the lead one out to figure out what is the difference that the, and uh, in case this simulation is uh, uh, 
frankly, wrong. Why? Because in this case, uh, we use the propodidary preaching. We know that there is a strong dependence of, of temperature with the cold. And so probably here we have, for a better case, we have to do the trend of preaching. So if you look at the results, then you can also decide to, to change strategies. And if you use the trend preaching, the, this is the error you obtain. Actually, we are quite lucky because temperature is not so widely variating in time. <laughs> but if you have precipitation, you have you you can have more troubles. <laughs> this is the classical case in where you present the result that went well <laughs> among the hundreds that went wrong. Okay. Yes. Now that you mentioned precipitation, uh, do you do it in two steps, like one occurrence and one magnitude? Or how do you do it? Because we do it like we first do an indicator rigging, which it means that once it rains, or zero, it doesn't rain. And then another step that calculates how much it rain, rain in those cells we no. want. No? No? We, uh, for each time step, we read, uh, we read the, for each time step, we read the measured data. <coughs> Uh, whatever it is zero is zero, whatever it is a value is a value, and then we use the idea of the data that uh, in the measured points it honors the data, so it means that it predicts zero where it doesn't uh, have precipitation, and it gives some value where the value is a little bit. Okay. And then you put a threshold. Go ahead. And then you put a threshold. Imagine you have a station with zero, yeah, you station with five, and there's a lot of yes. points with zero point zero one, zero yes, point. Yes, you can put a threshold then okay. in your, uh, when you read your uh, file of output and say that lower than one millimeters or lower okay. than zero point five millimeters is zero. Mm. Question. Uh, if we don't have data, what you assume is zero, but it may be it is not zero, we don't have data. So it, it makes uncertainty or not? Uh, which method? That you said if we don't have data, we, we, it model puts zero. No, 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 I didn't. Uh, no, this is not correct. So if we have uh, a set of station and we have some station that measure zero, mm -hmm. we consider it zero. Z if uh, there are stations that measure higher than zero, we consider this value. He was asking that uh, uh, there are other methodology that runs two steps. The first steps, you just create the fact that uh, it is raining or it's not raining. So it's an indicator to okay. it. The second step is where it rains, then you predict how much it rains. Is okay. it yeah. Okay. yeah, if you don't have measure, you, you simply don't have measure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, essentially, if you you don't have measure at all, then you are not. Uh, the, 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 the program is not running. No. If, if at all. Not, yes. At all. Yeah. If you have missing values, uh, it, it goes. To you, you skip. But you should have missing value for all the station of all your domain, which is unlikely because some stations will work. Yeah. Yeah, for not working in the program, you don't have you need to have any 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 value. Uh, so uh, uh, before I was presenting to you uh, actually the raster case, but you can have both. Uh, forecasting in points and uh, forecasting in, in the raster. The problem, which is the problem with the raster, you have to repeat the, the interpolation operation in how in thousands of, or sometimes millions of points. So this is uh, taking a lot of time. And uh, actually, in the procedure you will use, we are using 
the net three strategy, which is subdividing the sub basin, so each sub basin is treated separately and they go in parallel partially. But if you want to do just in a point, you have to do here the same operation here. This should be highlighted the differences in this in this thing. So maybe you, you will have a sim file like this one. And uh, in this case, you put the, the, the station ID and the, the elevation, which is qu called quota in here in Italian, the elevation. And uh, you put here the, the, the point where you want the, 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 the data. In that case, it's a single point. Um, it's, it's called centroids here because uh, usually when you select a sub catchment like you do, uh, we used to have just one interpolation for one sub catchment. Is this reasonable? Usually not. You should have more than one point uh, if, if the catchment is, is, pretty, is pretty large. But for instance, for temperature, if you have a a sub catchment which is, I don't know, half a square you know, kilometer is a, uh, using a single temperature is reasonable. If you have, but could not be reasonable, for instance, for precipitation, which is much, uh, much more by varying, varying in, 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 in space. So you have also to, to take all this decision and when, when you run the process, uh, as experience, I know that my students usually don't think very much when they do this kind of thing. They prepare the procedure and then they run always the same time, clicking on the bottom, which is not always safe, I would say. So, and so you have to recheck all the results at the end. Some thinking before save a lot of computation anyway after. So this is this are the connection, nothing new in the connection. And uh, what about the raster case? The raster case change you have to give the raster in input, the raster reader here, and you have the, the raster writer. And uh, the reader goes in the time series. And uh, just understand that there is a raster because you have you read here the D, the whole linear. You don't read the, the shape file of the points, you read the D. And you understand he has to reproduce uh, uh, one one for a casting for each point of the DA. The parameters here are the same uh, that we have before. So the, the, sh the shape and the number of points in a DEM tells you how, how many times it is iterated. This is the result. In this, in this case, I think it's temperature from 10 degrees in the valley to one degree or something on top of the mountain. And I think uh, we, we have finished. And so after five minutes of, uh, five minutes of uh, <coughs>